Welcome to Let's Crack UPSC CSC English. About me, I'm Sandeep Bhushan. I have eight years of teaching experience for civil services. I teach international relations, internal security, and in-depth analysis of Hindu editorials and articles. And this video is in regards to how to crack prelims 2020. But prior to that, you have a notification for subscription for how to crack UPC CSC with India's largest leading platform that is Unacademy. Once you get subscri subscribed, you will get unlimited access live and recorded courses from India's best educators. And the other privileges are that you would get daily live classes wherein you can chat with your educator engage in discussions ask your doubts and also be part of the answer polls you can also have live tests and quizzes you can evaluate your preparation with our regular mock tests and quizzes and you would also get detailed analysis on your performance you have structured courses wherein all our courses are structured in line with UPSC exam syllabus which will help you best prepare for it and you also have unlimited access once you subscribe, you would get access to all our live and recorded courses and you can watch in the mobile or with the laptop. You have top educators at an academy. They are Sudarshan Gurjar, Ayush Sanghi, Prakash Kumar and Murnal Patel. You also have special classes by Dr. Roman Sainisa, Dr. Siddharth Arora, Lokendra Chauhan, Rakesh Varma and Ashish Malik. You also have the upcoming courses in our platform that is capsule course on 250 multiple choice for UPSC prelims. You also have comprehensive course on public administration, capsule course on geography optional and let's crack UPSC 2021. In regards to the UPSC CSC let's crack CSC English subscription, you have 12 months of subscription wherein the amount is 40,000. You have 24 month subscription. The original price is 52. And when you go ahead with subscription, you can use my code SBT10. This is my code. And once you use my code while subscribing, you will get additional 10% discount on the 40,000 for 12 months. And then the actual price to be paid it will be 36,000. And while you go ahead with subscribing for 24 months using my code SBT10. You will get 10% discount and you will get a discount and then the price will be for 46,800 for 24 months. So it's always better to go ahead with civil services preparation for at least minimum one to two years because the serious preparation has to be minimum of two years. And then if you are going ahead with the two years preparation, it is always recommended to go ahead with subscription for two, 24 months that is for two years. And when you go ahead with 24 month subscription, you will get 24 month subscription only for the amount you pay for one, one, month, one year plus one month. So the amount you pay for 12 months plus one month extra, you will get 24 months subscription. So it's always recommended to go ahead with 24 months and get all the privileges in the Unacademy place. Not only my classes, but along with my classes, you can go ahead with having the classes of the top educators in regards to all the subjects and now in regards to the topic that is the in-depth analysis of editorials and articles of today's newspaper so prior to that you would we will go, go ahead with looking at what are the topics that we would discuss today that is president's nomination standing together a fall for aloofness violative of minority rights. So first we will go ahead with the one that is competitive impropriety. So what does it mean or why is the news in the editorial that it is the editor is talking about whom and what is he trying to mention there. So obviously it is in regards to the a nomination of the former Chief Justice of India Ranjan Gogai as a Rajya Sabha member by the President of India. And this has created a, a little bit of ruckus in the in the in the in the in the uh, entire 
scenario of judiciary and also in the in the political spectrum that how could this take place that means the nomination of the former chief justice of india that is ranjan gogoi as a rajya sabha member by the president there is lot of discussions that going on so we will look at what exactly is going on and why it is really in the news so when we look at the presidential nomination it is as per the constitution the president can go ahead with nominating any person i mean in regards to the as per the as per mentioned in the constitution the president has a right to allocate or go ahead with appointing members who have who have their academic excellence or their respective knowledge which can be used by the parliament of india so in that regards ranjan gogoi the former chief justice of india has been a, has been nominated as rajya sabha member and this is really creating a i mean rubble because he has gone ahead with many judgments in the past so we will look at the judgments that he has gone ahead or he has been i mean headed so he has gone ahead with ayodhya dispute he has gone ahead with rafael investigation and then he has also gone ahead with i mean headed in regards to validity of electoral bonds and also in regards to the kashmir altered status so these were the uh, judgments wherein he has been headed and then the judgments have been delivered or the verdicts have been given now after his retirement it was just a gap of around 4 months and then he has been nominated as a rajya sabha member so that is by the president uh, present government so this is kind of expectations or inspire against the justification that means that is lot of questions have been raised within 4 months of his retirement how is it possible or is it possible that the chief justice former justice, chief justice of india can be nominated as a rajya sabha member so you ought to have followed the example there is a point i mean many of them are i mean having a question that he has to he has to actually been following what his former colleagues have done in regards to the post retirement work so many of them haven't really accepted the 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 kind of uh, government post or getting into the politics immediately but he he but after the retirement within 4 to 5 months former chief justice of india ranjan gogoi has accepted the offer that is being nominated as a rajya sabha member and then in reference to the late chief justice of india that is ranganath misra and justice bahurlal islam so here we will look at the the issue as of now is in regards to the the former chief justice of india that is ranjan gogoi in regards to the being nominated as the rajya sabha member so we will look at whether there was any kind of instances that previous chief justices were or justices were also been part of the taking up the executive role wherein they were trying to influence the that particular day of the government so in regards to that ranganath mishra and justice bahur lal islam have also gone ahead with taking up the executive and then it has amounted for competitive impropriety so it has amounted to competitive impropriety so what is impropriety it is a kind of indecency or a rudeness so once you are been part of the judiciary and then you are again getting into the executive then it is kind of a, a message or a, or a, you are ending into a sphere wherein it is competitive impropriety so if you look at the previous two incidents that is justice misra commission of inquiry has pardoned the congress from the kind of organizational responsibility which has actually been meted in the 1984 anti sikh riots so in the year 1984 anti sikh riots have taken place this in this there was a case and then justice mishra commission has pardoned the congress person in regards to being organizational responsibility for the entire anti sikh riots so here the judgment or the commission which has given a, a report it has pardoned the congress member this is one 
and the second one is in regards to the justice islam justice islam also has pardoned a congress chief minister of wrongdoing in a financial scandal in bihar so if you look at the previous two incidents the both the congress member and then the congress chief ministers have been pardoned in two different cases so that means these kind of incidents have taken place and then later on justice islam has moved between parliament and judiciary so this is not the first case what we are talking about ranjan gogoi the former uh, chief justice of india being nominated as the rajya sabha member but in regards to our discussion we are also trying to put forward that it has also happened in the past by ranganath mishra and justice bahurlal islam wherein they have gone ahead with two commissions and then they have actually i mean the decision or the verdict has been in favor of the congress and the con congress former congress chief minister in regards to the uh, in in regards to the case so justice islam has also made sure that he has gone ahead or quitting the upper house in 1972 to take office of the high court judge and later on again in the year 1983 he quit supreme court judge to contest an election so the, the the reason why i'm trying to explain here is that getting into the parliament or being the part of the political party or the government of the day is not a new to the former chief justice of india ranjan gogoi being nominated as a rajya sabha member so it is very clear that it has been also been taken up or it has we have experienced that there were instances that in regards to mishra commission and justice islam so they were also part of the judiciary and then later on they were part of the executive so for a better understanding about ranjan gogoi's incidents now we have taken up mishra's commission and then justice islam and then <clears throat> in regards to the nom members being nominated to rajya sabha we will look at it in regards to the which articles really gives them the power to the president to nominate a member to the rajya sabha so again this year is also important for prelims point of view on the sidelines of ranjan gogoi former chief justice of india being nominated as the rajya sabha member by the president there could be a possibility of a question in the prelims again based on the article so article 81 of a and article 80 of 3 of the indian constitution and the council of the states is composed wherein we know that it has 250 members and out of this 250 members 12 are nominated by the president by the article article 81 of a and article 80 of 3 so the president has the power by the constitution of india which is enshrined in article 81 of a and RT, article 80 of 3 that he can go ahead with nominating the members who have the special knowledge or have the practical experience in regards to literature science art or social service so in that regards whatever has been in regards to nominating of the ranjan gogoi is not at all wrong as it has been discussed in various sectors in the country but as per the constitution the president is enshrined to go ahead with appointing as per article 81 of a and RT, article 80 of 3 so it is absolutely as per the constitution of india and by adopting the principle of nomination in rajya sabha the constitution has enshrined that nation must receive services from most distinguished persons so as it is clearly mentioned in the constitution that the nation should receive or the nation can accept the services from the most distinguished persons of the country who have earned distinction in their field of activity so definitely there is a possibility that the field of activity that is in regards to the judiciary whatever ranjan gogoi has carried out throughout his experience in his tenure or service he can definitely make sure that that is being used by the nation so it is always right or correct or appropriate as per the constitution of india and in regards to the conclusion the appointment of mr ranjan gogoi as a rajya sabha member indicates an alarming intention to undermine judicial authority so that 
elected executive is seen as all powerful so you can take this from both the sides wherein you can take it as the the kind of nomination which has taken place in regards to the former chief justice of india from the constitution point of view wherein it is absolutely right but if i looking at from different point of view wherein it the uh, uh, wherein the nomination of ranjan gogoi undermines the judicial authority wherein the executive is powerful at this moment so you can also take this as an mains question and then you can also go ahead with writing an answer so you have the preliminary point of view quest, uh, uh, questions which can be taken up here and also in regards to the mains point of view and then the next you have the standing together so the article here which talks about is in regards to the display of humanity display of humanity so what is that we have to display that it is the importance or the role of each and every individual and the responsibility of each and every individual that is in regards to the indian citizens that we have to go into consideration of the need of the hour is to display the humanity so when we are talking about it the article is time for powerful display of humanity so what kind of humanity is required at this moment so what is happening now and why the powerful display of humanity is essential at this juncture so we all are aware that we should stand together so why should we stand together because we are all aware that the covid 19 is pandemic and it is spreading across countries throughout the globe that is it has hit globally and from the time it has actually been the epicenter that is china or wuhan been the epicenter right from then till for within 45 days we have in the globe or the world has experienced 1 lakh cases and there is a expectation that it might reach to 200 to 300 million cases in just 4 to 8 and again 4 to 8 million cases which has actually because it is been spreading very virulent in europe and this this data or this kind of what you say expectation in regards to the cases might really surge in just 2 to 4 months so what is important is that the virus is spreading very virulent and then it is spreading in such a way that it might take up to even 200 to 3 million of cases because now the epicenter from china has been shifted to europe and then even middle east and then west asia is also spreading at a very faster pace being virus being virulent so it would take only just 2 to 4 months to more of number of cases which would fall under the ambit of corona virus so at this juncture at this time it is testing time for india so when we are talking about testing time for india definitely it is testing time for india that how we actually accept or how we actually go ahead with making sure that we are all ready and then we do not panic but we are ready with the preventive measures so it is in regards to how well we are educated to prevent the spread of the virus and at the same time the kind of laboratory test what india has is also taken into consideration in our discussion so testing time in india is abysmally that is very low that is it has in regards to the statistic the testing can take place as per the machinery we have only 10 in a million people in india and then when we compare it with the other countries that is with thailand that is more comparatively better than india in regards to the testing that is 120 in a million in thailand and then 40 per million in vietnam so when we are comparing india with our southeast asian countries then it is very very low comparatively to testing capacity what we have in india in regards to testing the coronavirus symptom patients to make sure that the virus do not spread virulent and then there are definitely shortages even though in being able to procure more adequate supplies but still we are falling under shortages and then the shortages are happening because we have we have this limited stocks across the 
to various countries and because of the limited stocks because of the virus being spread and then there is supply shock which is really experiencing across the world and this is making that the stocks are limited and when the stocks are limited it is very clear that we are unable to procure more of our adequate supplies so thereby testing in most important is the most important thing we could be doing right now so what is the prime importance at this time imperative for us is to make sure that we increase our testing laboratory test so that we can make sure that the numbers are not extending or the numbers are not really growing when we compare it with the kind of numbers we have or the numbers what india is going at that is icmr and then the ministry of health is going at with the number of tests they have been conducting is very low and then when we compare it with the united kingdom which has a better health system than india it has admitted that the number of infections are truly very low compared to the number of cases actually they have taken up so we also should make sure that we go ahead with more of testing and then it is very clear that there are could be many 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 individuals who are under the ambit of symptoms but they are unable to go ahead with the testing because of the lack of testing laboratories so all these catastrophic events will occur to humanity so it is not only that it is pertaining to one particular country not to china us or europe or uk or iran or southeast asian countries or india but this catastrophic the pandemic will definitely affect the entire humanity so we have also experienced the kind of effect which has been catastrophic on the humanity earlier is by the asteroid hit and also by the nuclear war and then various other disease pandemic so it is need of the hour that we think about the humanity and what are the challenges we would be facing in regards to how we can come together to keep aside all the differences and just think about humanity because it is a widespread so testing where commons in india and then the number which has been confirmed is always what you say surging in thousands and it is happening at a very quick pace and this is what we have to be prepared not with panic and not with fear mongering but with complete education complete preventive measures that we are ready even though they, we have the lacuna a little bit of lacuna because now the government is going ahead with making arrangements to increase the number of laboratory tests so we need not really panic or we not we not really have any kind of fear mongering but we have to stick to the preventive measures and then go ahead with the number of laboratories which are been extended time and again as per the situation demands by the government of india so we need not really worry but definitely there is a challenge that the number of cases or the symptoms are increasing very quickly so that is a cause of concern and it is a challenge and then pandemic preparedness always in india it is taking a back back seat to the crisis so we should make sure that we are all well prepared and then make sure that preventive measures are in place at the same time testing capacities are developed so that we can make sure that we can also current quarantine the people or the one who have been affected by the symptoms and be very well prepared that pandemic do not spread but wherein we can try to restrict it and then make sure that the humanity is protected the entire global humanity is protected and what are the measures we can go ahead with taking up to make sure that we build the humanity the government may have put in place a strict measures of quarantining and this is very important because sometimes the government of india has to be has to be very strict and in regards to this quarantining has to be very 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 strict because it is very clear that if anyone who doesn't really show any symptoms but he or she is moving across in the in the in the in the public then there is always a possibility that the contamination can take place and the spread of virus can take place virulent and then once it spreads it spreads very fast at a very faster pace 
and then the entire lot that is the whenever the that particular person with the symptom moves into the public then it's a very great concern so strict measures and quarantining and closures have to be the prime important measures and in the next two weeks there has to be a spent on planning that is in the large and temporary hospitals have to be built or accommodated the way the china has gone ahead making sure that all the one uh, all the patients who have the symptoms can go ahead with being placed or quarantined in the hospitals which are existing and if they are not sufficient then we have to go ahead with the large and temporary hospitals and then make sure that the virus is not spreading but we are quarantining the people or the patients who are with the symptoms and it is really a time to stand together yes when we are talking about the humanity has to be protected and when we are talking about the humanity has to be protected definitely we have to make sure that we should have an eye on our neighbors on our friends on our families and our co workers and indeed anyone who has less than we do that means we have to be very vigilant about how the things can go ahead that means when we are talking about the vigilance vigilant that is in regards to the preventive measures do not panic let there not be any fear mongering let there be social distancing and then by making sure all these are in place by the preventive measures we can make sure that we stand together not trying to blame each other but we stand together and protect the humanity and now it is the time <clears throat> for all the countries across the world it could be the least developed countries or developing countries or developed countries they have to think about healthier planet if they are not thinking or if they are not going at with the concept of healthier planet then it will definitely impact you we will not have an healthier economy so to have an healthier planet and healthier economy it is very important that we need to go ahead with a powerful display that we need to go ahead with a powerful display of humanity and when we can exhibit a powerful display of humanity so definitely we can make sure that there it is our ours is a healthier planet and then the healthier planet will definitely make sure that the economy will be healthier and then we would conclude this by saying that let us hope and then let us hope this brings out the best in us that is trying to be or build a powerful humanity and not the worst these events are just dress rehearsal and more challenging events are yet to come that is in regards to climate change that is the pandemic the coronavirus covid 19 is just a dress rehearsal and then there could be or there is more challenging events such as climate change which will really hit the the planet in the forthcoming or in this century so things are about to get a lot worse so we have to be mentally prepared every time that there would be a worse scenario which would take place but at the same time making sure that we are able to counter the worst scenario and then come out of it very successfully and thereby again make making sure that the kind of efforts or the experience in regards to the pandemic covid 19 we also have we also all the countries together should come have a common platform and then also go ahead with how best we can counter the climate change and protect our planet if we take care of others we will survive this is very important if we take care of each other we will survive these challenges with our humanity intact so even though there are many challenges our humanity will be intact only when we take care of each other and then when we take care of each other then there is always a possibility that we will survive and then our planet will be healthier so this is very important for mains point of view whatever explanation we have gone ahead today in this topic it's very good comparing it with the covid comparing it with the healthier planning comparing it covid uh, pandemic with the healthier economy comparing the pandemic with the humanity so we will now get into the next one that is an article which talks about in upper house nomination a fall for aloofness so is it a fall for aloofness 
the topic here is a fall for aloofness so as we have discussed in the first editorial about the nomination of former chief justice of india ranjan gogoi to be nominated to the raj sabha so we had the basic introduction or everything about that now we will we'll get into the other issues or why actually there is a fall for aloofness so we have also few issues regards to ranjan gogoi the former chief justice of india we will look at them there is allegation or there was allegation and then a, a, a case was filed against the former chief justice of india that is ranjan gogoi by a female staffer who used to work at the resident of ranjan gogoi and then he, he, i mean the female staffer has accused ranjan gogoi and then has gone ahead with an affidavit in regards to harassment by chief justice former chief justice of india that is ranjan gogoi and then when the female staffer has gone ahead with filing a case or affidavit she was immediately dismissed from service in an ex parte that is one side hearing this is very important for clean's point of view one side hearing what is ex parte so you should be very well aware or a better understanding about what was the case in regards to the female staffer who was filed an affidavit against the former chief justice of india that is ranjan gogoi in regards to the harassment so that case was and in that she was i mean she was dismissed from service in an ex parte that is one side hearing not only she was dismissed but her brother in law was also removed from the uh, office which wherein he was inducted in the supreme court as a staff of the supreme court under the Ch justice gogoi's discretionary quota so there is a discretionary quota by the chief justice of india under that quota the brother in law of the the uh, the female staffer was also been removed by the supreme court wherein he was working as a supreme court staff and then was also terminated without assigning any reason so this case has made it very clear that it was going ahead with a kind of position that the power of chief justice of india was into action and justice gogoi was the one who sat as a judge in his own case this is again a very good information wherein you have to look at in regards to prelims point of view and also in regards to the mains point of view when you are writing an answer what are the rules there are that you have to maintain in regards to after your retirement what position you are taking and what job you are taking what kind of work you are going at and how you can go ahead with taking a case take, taking up a case so in this regards the female staffer the justice goga sat as a judge in his own cause in a case he titled it as a matter of great public importance touching upon the independence of the judiciary so the title of the case was about a matter of great public importance so in this case he himself has sat as a judge so now we'll come to the technicality of the entire issue because in the first in the in the, in the editorial that is the first uh, topic we were, we did talk about how the nomination being nominated the president has the power and the articles we have looked at and then we here we will look at the code of conduct for judges again this is important for prelims point of view because of the case what has taken up recent past and then also in regards to the mains point of view the code of conduct for judges so you have 16 point code of conduct for the judges and it is also called as restatement of values of judicial life again for prelims point of view code of conduct can also be called as restatement values of judicial life could be one of your statement and says that which among the following statement is wrong and then this 16 point code of conduct or restatement of values of judicial life was adopted at a chief justice conference in the year may 1997 prelims point of view 
and then it states that you have this sixth point among the 16 point in regards to our discussion you we will look at this sixth point and then we will look at this seventh point so what does the sixth point states it states that a judge should practice a degree of aloofness consistent with the degree of his office aloofness in the sense keeping himself or herself aside so it's very clear that you should not interfere in few matters you should keep aside keeping yourself aside in few of the matters and then among the 16 point the sixth point very clearly talks about the degree of aloofness and then the seventh point talks about a judge shall not hear and decide a matter in which a member of his family a close relation or a friend is concerned so when it is in this case i mean in this uh, point seventh point a judge shall not hear and decide a matter in which a member of his family a close relation or friend is concerned so taking into consideration of the way the ranjan gogoi has uh, agreed for the nomination of being nominated as rasabha member not being aloof a degree of aloof within he was been nominated within 4 to 5 months and then again in regards to the female staffer case he himself was as a judge he sat himself as a judge so these two instances in our discussion which talks or which has a code of conduct for judges of 16 point this point 6 and point 7 are very important and then this could be again a very important prelims question and then we will also look at the what were the key judgments being or which have been part of the ranjan gogoi's judgments because he was the former chief justice of india we will look at them he has delivered several important verdicts like ayodhya judgment because it was a it was having a lot of impact on the political consequences and the way it was actually going ahead was like there could be chaos or it could be riots which would take place or it could be communal riots which could take place because of the judgment of the ayodhya but it was all smooth and it has sailed very uh, calmly and he was the one the former chief justice of india ranjan gogoi was the one who has delivered various or several important verdicts in far reaching in regards to the political consequences and one amongst them is the ayodhya judgment he has also dismissed a review of rafale fighter aircraft deal with the grounds of which the original judgment has actually negated an independent investigation so which has actually negated an independent investigation had not been challenged and then he has dismissed a review petition filed in regards to the rafale fighter aircraft deal so one is in regards to ayodhya judgment rafale fighter aircraft deal and then he has also been pass of pass i mean part of he has presided over and pushed the national register of citizen nrc in assam we have also seen that the implication of the aftermath of the nrc in assam that almost 19 lakh people were excluded from the nrc and then when 19 lakh people were excluded we have also seen among 19 lakh people 15 lakh people were hindus and then there were others muslims also who were unable to prove to the gauhati high court and also to the formal tribunal that whatever documents they possessed they were not been accepted and then they were almost they were to be accepted as a foreigners or pushed towards detention camps and then they could be that they would be considered as a foreigners or bangladeshis and could be deported so even in regards to the issue which has we have experienced recent past that is national register of citizen he also has presided and pushed for it and then we also have the sabarmala temple review so a constitution bed judgment wherein he was part of it has also excluded the menstruation women from entering the temple 
it says that it was discriminatory and therefore it is against the constitution morality so in regards to the sabarmalai that this was the judgment said that it is against the constitution morality and then a bench headed by justice gogai then has referred this issue to a larger bench so he has taken up the case but later further he has again passed on this he has referred this to a larger bench in regards to the sabarmalai temple review in regards to the women entering into the temple and then he was also a judge when he was part, he has participated in a press conference wherein it, he has criticized the former chief justice of india that is deepak mishra he has criticized him because he was accusing him of abusing the powers that he ranjan gogai has accused deepak mishra that he has abused his powers for or as a master of roster to fix politically sensitive cases so there would be a roster wherein it could be a it could be in regards to the who would be part of the the bench or it could be single judge or the two judge or three judge four judge five and then later on up to nine and eleven judge bench so that roster rooster would actually been taken up by the master so who was the master the chief justice of india and then he was fixing it what ranjan goga has said is he has accused deepak mishra that he has abused his power to fix the master of roster to fix politically sensitive cases before any convenient benches so this was an accusation against the former chief justice of india deepak mishra from ranjan goga and then he has also delivered <coughs> ramnath goenka lecture in 2008 and in the lecture he has also said or made a statement that country what country needs and he has said the country needs not only noisy journalist and independent judges he said country needs not only noisy journalist and independent judges but even independent journalists and noisy judges so this is a, an eloquently made statement by our former chief justice of india ranjan gogoi wherein he clearly says that that it is not only the journalists who are noisy but even the judges should be noisy and then we will look at this 16 code of conduct for judges that is also called as we discussed it is restatement of values of judicial life so this has been adopted by the supreme court on 7th may 1997 and it is a code of judicial ethics and it serves as a guide for independent and fair judicial so again for prelims point of view very important so make a note that when it has been actually adopted and then it is code of judicial ethics wherein it has to guide independent and fair judicial and then we will look at the 16 point not completely but trying to just have a glance sort of so the first one talks about the behavior and conduct of the members wherein they have to be impartially in regards to the judiciary process and the second one talks about that the judge should not contest the elections to any office and the third one is in regards to the close association members she has the the judge has or he shall be sco that means the judge should always avoid any kind of close association with the members or individual members of the bar bar association and then the next one is <clears throat> the judge should not permit any member of his family member to be a member of the bar association to appear before him so the next one is no member of his family shall be permitted to use his residence the next the next one is the judge should practice a degree of aloofness this is the one sixth one which wherein we have looked at while we were discussing in regards to the article and the seventh one is the judge shall not hear and decide a matter in which a member this is also the seventh one which we have discussed in regards to our article and the eighth one is that judge shall not enter into a public debate wherein it is in regards to the political matters 
and the next is the judge is expected to let his judgment speak and then he should not give any interviews to the media and then next is the judge shall not accept any gifts or hospitality next the judge shall not hear and decide a matter with a company which he holds share these are all the one which are judicial ethics again this is important when we i am trying to take a glance of the 16 points because when you have a question in regards to mains of prelims in regards to judicial ethics so you will have a fair idea about the the, the kind of points you need to consider and then how you need to make sure that you should arrive at the best answer in regards to prelims and also in regards to the mains that is judicial ethics and then the one other one is the judge shall not speculate in shares the judge shall not engage directly or indirectly in a trade or business the judge shall not ask for or accept contribution and then the 15th one is that judge shall not seek any financial benefits and the last that is the 16th one is every judge must at all time be conscious that he is under the public gaze so these are the 16 code of conduct of judges or you can say it as judicial ethics or the restatement of values of judicial life so it could be that the 16 point can he could say i mean the upsc in the prelims can say that statement 1 as code of conduct for judges statement 2 restatement of values of judicial life third statement judicial ethics so the 16 point he would say which among the following is not part of it he might confuse it so in that in that scenario in that question all the three are the 16 point for the code of conduct now we will look at the other article which talks about minority rights it talks about the minority rights so when this article is talking about the minority rights so we need to be very clear that what actually the 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 face value of the minorities are in india what kind of privileges do they have in regards to the society in regards to religion point of view and then what kind of privileges they have as a minority status as per the constitution of india so we will look at it and then we will look at it that there are violations of minority rights in india so how the minority rights have been violated what are the rights they possess which are the articles which talks about it and what are the sections which talks about the article 30 and which have the few rights and how they are actually been been taken away or their rights minority rights have been taken away so we will look at it and then we will start the discussion the minorities in general that is muslims in particular accepted the pledge of sardar vallabhbhai patel that what sardar vallabhbhai patel said is our mission is to satisfy every interest and safeguard the interest of all the minorities to the satisfaction that is we have to satisfy every interest safeguard their interest and then we have to make sure that the minorities all this are done in regards to their satisfaction and that is our mission so it is our mission it is their minor it is their rights so now it is mission versus rights what is our mission as per sardar vallabhbhai patel and what are the rights as per the constitution of india and how the things are actually prevailing in this or at this moment so you have the special safeguards being guaranteed to the minorities which are incorporated in the article 30 of the indian constitution so it is the article 30 which gives special safeguards to the minorities and which by this article 
it instills a kind of confidence and security in the minds of the minorities that is the muslims in india that their rights are being safeguarded now we will look at few other i mean a judgments which have actually been taken up based on article 30 which we are talking about which we are taking up the case in regards to the minority rights so we will look at the judgment which has been given by the single judge ben single judge of calcutta high court in the year 2014 it has struck down in 2014 the calcutta high court has struck down section 10 11 and 12 as violative of article 30 so you have section 10 11 and 12 part of article 30 which enshrines the safeguards special safeguards to the minorities in the constitution of india but the calcutta high court in 2014 in its judgment it has struck down the section 10 11 and 12 of article 30 which guarantees the religious and linguistic minorities what does it guarantee it guarantees the right to establish and administer educational institution so what is important here is we are talking about or we would be discussing about the minority rights in regards to their educational institutions in regards to their the way they have the rights to go ahead with recruitment in their educational minority educational institutions so for prelims point of view article 30 section 10 11 and 12 and then again in regards to how they can administer this is very important because we would be talking about this a little bit this word administer in the later part of our discussion so how they can administer the educational institutions but this was struck down by the calcutta high court in 2014 that is section 10 11 and 12 was struck down and in december 2015 after 2014 a division bench of high court has upheld upheld in the sense it has supported that decision which talks about section 10 11 and 12 of article 30 which gives a guarantee that the administration of educational institution and again in 2019 that is in chandana das a three judge bench case it has given a judgment saying that it has given the six as a minority status or gave the six minority institutions of west bengal the right to appoint teachers so here the right to appoint teachers and right to go ahead with administrating their education institution in regards to section 10 11 and 12 as per article 30 for minorities were struck down in 2014 by calcutta high court but if you look at 2019 again chandana das which is in regards to west bengal high court again has given a judgments wherein it has given the sikh minority institution that they can go ahead or they have the right that they can go ahead with appointing the teachers but the apex court again to be noted here is in contrary to the judgment given to the sikh minority they have denied to the muslim minority the religious about their religious institutions so in 2019 the west bengal high court has given a decision or the verdict in support of or right to appoint teachers for the sikh minority institutions but again in contrary to that the apex court has denied the muslim minority religious institutions the right to appoint teachers and again in the another judgment that is in regards to the minority rights you have a two judge bench that is justice u u lalit and justice arun mishra who have upheld that is upheld in the sense supported the west bengal board of madrasa education act the west bengal board of madrasa education act 1994 and the west bengal madrasa service commission act 2008 again for prelims point of view you have to be very clear that about the boards that is board of madrasa education act 1994 and then the west bengal madrasa Service Commission Act 2008, both of which 
they can take away the autonomy of madrasas in the state so it was a, a historical judgment by the two judge bench in the year that you you lalit and arun mishra has gone, gone ahead with supporting that both the boards can go ahead with taking the autonomy of the madrasas and they can go ahead with appointment of the teachers that is in regards to theological institutions and then shall now be made a board nominated by the government and then we will look at what are the rights what the minorities have under the article 30 section 10 because we did talk about section 10 section 11 section 12 which were struck down by the calcutta high court in 2014 so now we will look at a little bit about what does actual section 10 section 11 and section 12 talks about so section 10 of the west bengal madrasa service commission act 2008 it can appoint teachers the here the main point of in regards to section 10 is appointment of teachers and they can be recommended by the commission that and the management of the committees shall be bound by such, such recommendations so section 10 very clearly gives the rights to the west bengal madrasa commission service commission act 2008 for the appointment of the teachers and section 11 says that anyone appointed in contravention that is breach of this act which act that is west bengal madrasa service act 2008 if there is any appointment in breach of 2008 act they shall not be considered as teachers so that means the section as per section 10 the 2008 act madrasa service commission act has a power lot of powers and then if there is any appointment in breach of this act so it is invalid so we will look at section 12 section 12 empowers the government to deny grants to the school so here again it is not to the what do you say the board or the madrasas but here section 12 empowers the government again prelims point of view if he is trying to confuse the section 10 with section 11 and section 12 you need to be thorough with the 10 11 and 12 for prelims point of view a probable question could be and then it empowers the government to deny grants to the school that refuse to make appointment in accordance with such recommendations so whatever recommendations have been given by the commission that recommendations have to be followed and if they do not follow then the government has the power to deny the grants to that school which he is go or which goes against the recommendations and then appoints the teachers and further the government recognition and affiliations can be withdrawn and then i was talking about the word administer at the initial here i was talking about right to establish and establish is one word right to establish and right to administer so this as i said we will look at this administer what does it actually mean and what kind of judgment have passed in regards to that taking into consideration of the word administer the expression administer in article 30 has been interpreted by the larger benches of the court such as judges of ahmedabad st xavier's college in 1974 and 11 judges in tma pi foundation 2003 so in 2003 it was taken into consideration that there was a need to look at the word or to what do you say a more examine thoroughly the word administer and the apex court has been consistent in holding the term administer that it includes rights of minority institutions to select their governing body so administer is what it is that it has or it can go ahead with selecting the government bodies teachers staff and it can exercise disciplinary control over them and it has also has the right to fix responsible or reasonable fees 
and admission of the students in a fair and transparent manner. So, the word administer has lot of meaning in Article 30, which gives a solid power to the rights of minority institutions, to the minority institutions about their recruitment to the teachers, staff, and then they are having disciplinary control over the fees, the students, but all this has to be in a fair and transparent manner. So this is again very important for prelims point of view and mains point of view. And I hope this session that is in-depth analysis of editorials and articles was useful for you, informative, knowledgeable for prelims and also for mains point of view, focusing on the prelims point of view. And then you please like the like the video subscribe the video and hit the bell button for further notification and while you are watching the youtube youtube channel that is let's crack upsc english youtube video you can subscribe the subscribe the unacademy by using my code sbt10 that is sandeep bhushan tumala 10 and then thereby you can get 10 percent discount and then you can Go ahead with watching the best educator.